The movie begins in an interview room of a company where a young girl, Nana Se, has come for a job interview. After introducing herself to the board, she tells them about her father, Nobara, the owner of Nobara Pharmaceuticals. She also tells them how much she hates her dad because he stinks and that she has no desire to work in a company that is a president like her father. Toward the end of the interview, she shares that she is a member of a death metal music band named Souls, where she sings about the miseries of life. She invites the board members to her her next concert and leaves immediately. Right after her interview, Nana Se is seen performing in a live concert where she is singing a song. The lyrics of this song are all about her annoying father and how he regulated her life by imposing his decisions on her. While she is performing, she is having flashbacks of all those moments of her childhood when her father forced her to become a chemist and join the pharmaceutical company. As the concert ends, Nana Se is informed that her father, Nobara, passed away in his office. She rushes to his office at Nobata Pharmaceutical Company, where his manager confirms the company's president's demise. Out of shock, she starts screaming loudly. The scene changes, and we are taken two days back, and the date is the 21st of December. It is a regular day at Nobata's residence, where Nana Se is sitting at the dinner table when her father joins her. As soon as he eats his breakfast, he suggests that Nana Se should join Nobata Pharmaceuticals. Nana Se gets agitated and repeatedly sends him a text asking him to die. After breakfast, she goes to pray in front of a glass showpiece that shows a video of her deceased mother, Yuriko. While playing, Nana Se remembers the time of Yuriko's death when she was dying in the hospital and Nobara was working in the laboratory. Nana Se thinks that Nobara didn't care for Yuriko and chose his work over his family, and for that, she will never forgive her father. Later that day, Nana Se performs again with her death metal band. During the concert, a man named Taku is seen filming her and sending her photos to his boss, Nobara. Later that night, Nobara's rival, Mr. Tanabe, owner of Watson Pharmaceuticals, pays a visit to Nobara and proposes a merger for both companies as he has his eye on the rejuvenation drug developed under Nobata's supervision. However, Nobata denies his proposal and refuses firmly, telling him that his assistance is not needed by Nobata Pharmaceuticals. Mr. Tanabe doesn't take rejection well and holds a grudge against Nobata. The next day, on the 22nd of December, Nanase is followed by Taku to her workplace, which is a Chinese food center. Nanase notices him, yet she chooses to ignore him. Nanase passes by him and sees him sending photos of her dad and asks him to stop bothering her. Taku tells her that he is just following his boss's orders to watch over her. Moreover, Taku tells her that he has been hired by Nanase's dad to watch over her. The next day, on the 23rd of December, Taku visits Nobara's office to ask him why he wants Taku to watch over her. That's when Nobara confesses that he wants Nanase to become a researcher. But she suddenly joined a band. That's why, in his opinion, she needs to be observed. This conversation is not Interrupted when Nobara's newly hired manager, Watabi, knocks on the door. Nobara asks Taku to tell Watabi that he is not here and rushes toward a cupboard to hide inside. When Watabi comes in to look for Nobara, he asks Taku to notify him when he sees the president and leaves in a hurry. When Nobara comes out of the locker, Taku is shocked to see him in different clothes. When he asks Nobara how he changed in a small locker, Nobara tells him that it is his special skill. After that, he asks Taku to join him in the laboratory. On the other hand, Nanase is sitting with her band in a restaurant, discussing disbanding their group, Souls. One of the members of the band suddenly receives a notification that the Christmas party at Crown Hotel got cancelled and gets sad because now she doesn't have any plans for Christmas. When the group asks Nanase about her Christmas plan, she tells him that she prefers to be alone. Back in the office, Nobara and Taku go to the laboratory together. In a moment, Watabi also joins them in the laboratory. Nobara approaches the chemist grand working on the rejuvenation drug and asks him about the current status of his development. Gramps, also known as Fuji, tells him that while making the rejuvenation drug called Romeo, he created another drug that can cause temporary death for two days. He also tells them that he has tried the drug on himself and has named it Juliet. Watabi becomes restless and asks Gramps to focus on the Romeo drug. Later that day, Taku comes to Nobara's office to look for him but finds the office empty.
empty. Thinking that he might be hiding in the locker, he searches the locker, but Nobara is not there either. Suddenly, he hears footsteps approaching, so he quickly locks himself in the same locker. A few seconds later, Nobara enters the office, followed by Watabe. Someone from the company's staff has been leaking important documents regarding the research on Romeo drug to the president of Watson Pharmaceuticals, Tanabe. Nobata tells Watabe that they need to find the spy quickly. That's when Watabe proposes that Nobata should take the Juliet drug and die for two days. As soon as he dies, someone from Watson Pharmaceutical will make a move and Watabe will be there to observe everything. Nobata likes Watabe's idea and decides to tell Nanase first. But Watabe stops him from calling her and manipulates him into thinking that it will be a secret between the both of them. Watabe hands over the bottle of Juliet to Nobata and without giving him time to read the precautions of the drug, he makes him swallow the pill. As the pill starts to show effects, Watabe pulls at a file and asks Nobata to sign the papers. After getting his signature on the papers, he asks about the research data on the Romeo drug. Nobata tells him that all the research is written in a research notebook protected with a password. When Watabe asks about the location of the research notebook, Nobata points to a random direction and tells him to ask his wife. At last, Watabe asks for the password of the notebook, to which Nobata replies by saying that the password is the most precious thing to him. After that, Nobata gasps and passes out. As Nobata dies, Watabe throws the precautions paper of the Juliet drug in the trash and notes down the time of Nobata's death without having the slightest idea that everything that happened in this room is witnessed by Taku from within the locker. The scene changes back to when Nanase is informed of her father's death by Watabe in front of all the band members. Moreover, she is told the last will of her father, according to which she is to become the new president of Nobata Pharmaceuticals, and all her support will be entrusted to Watabe. After hearing that, Nanase strongly refuses to act upon Nobata's will and informs the board that she can't do it. Watabe claims that she might be in shock, and hence, he commands Taku to accompany her to Nobata's body in the cafeteria. Meanwhile, in the cafeteria, Nobata's soul has left his body and is watching from a distance. While Nobata's soul is trying to comprehend that he is truly dead, suddenly, he sees a person appear right in front of him. The man introduces himself as Hino, the guide who will be sending him to the next world. Hino calls someone to arrange a boat for both of them to pass the Zenju River and send Nobata to his afterlife. On the contrary, Nobata tries to make him understand that he will revive in two days, but Hino doesn't listen and drags him away. In a few seconds, they reach the Zenju River and Hino rows the boat to take Nobata to the other side of the river to the afterlife. Nobata keeps telling him that he is not dead and will revive after two two days. Out of anger, Nobata orders Hino to turn the boat back. When Hino doesn't listen to him, Nobata starts shaking the boat vigorously. Hino gets scared and agrees to his request to go back. In the meantime, Nanase arrives with Taku in the cafeteria to see Nobata's dead body. When she uncovers Nobata's face, she asks Taku the cause of Nobata's death. In response, Taku reminds her of all the times when she wishes for him to die and tells her that her words killed her father. After saying this, Taku leaves her alone for a while. Nanase stands behind Nobata's body for a long time, crying and asking him why he died. Suddenly, Nobata's soul appears behind her to console her, but she can only see him and not listen to him. Thinking of him as a ghost, she starts screaming badly. Then she smells him and tells him that he stinks, so she sprays antiperspirant on him, which makes him disappear. On the other hand, Taku overhears Watabe talking to Mr. Tanabe on the phone. Watabe assures Mr. Tanabe that the merger of Watson Pharmaceuticals and Nobata pharmaceuticals will happen eventually as he will ask the board to have a vote very soon. That's when Taku realizes that Watabe is a traitor and is conspiring with Watson Pharmaceuticals. Suddenly, he hears Nanase's screams and he rushes to the cafeteria. When he gets to the cafeteria, he asks her what has happened. Thus, Nanase tells him that her father's soul was just there. Taku's tongue slips and he murmurs something. Nanase hears him and suspects that something is being hidden from her. When she asks him, he doesn't tell her anything. So, so, she has an idea. Since Taku is unable to see Nobata's soul, Nanase takes advantage of the situation and pretends that Taku is being choked by Nobata's soul. She lies to him that Nobata is saying that the liars will be killed by a curse. Taku becomes scared and admits that he was there at the time of Nobata's death and that he knows everything. So he tells her everything that happened the day Nobata dies. After Taku tells her everything, she becomes extremely angry with her father for doing experiments all his life. She comes near Nobata's body and wishes that he stays dead. Taku tries to make her understand that all of this smells like a conspiracy, but she tells him that she 
has had enough of Nobata's experiments and leaves immediately. Meanwhile, Nobata and Hino sit on a rooftop talking about Nanase. Nobata tells Hino that he regrets not talking to Nanase properly before dying. The next morning on the 24th of December, Nobata's soul and Hino visit Nobata Pharmaceuticals to examine the environment after his death. When Nobata and Hino check in on the board members meeting, Nobata realizes that no one is sad about his demise. In a few moments, Watabe joins the board of directors and asks them of their opinion on the merger with Watson Pharmaceuticals. Now that the president is dead, Nobata gets excited as now he will know who the traitor is in this company. However, he is shocked to know that all the board members are still against the merger, but only Watabe is the one who wants the merger to happen. After the board meeting, Watabe notifies Mr. Tanabe about his failure to convince the board members of the merger. Consequently, Mr. Tanabe suggests that Watabe must kill Nobata permanently before he can be revived. Hence, Watabe posts a notice on the office notice board that Nobata will be cremated tomorrow, the 25th of December at 11 a.m. When Nanase pays a visit to the office and comes across the notice board, she carefully reads the notice of Nobata's cremation. A few seconds later, Taku joins her and after reading the notice, he becomes restless. He tells Nanase that if Nobata is to be cremated at 11 a.m. on the 25th of December, then he will die before he can be revived because Nobata died at 2 p.m. on the 23rd of December. Nanase leaves the office, saying that she is not going to save her father at all. Taku follows her and convinces her that she actually wants to save Nobata, but she just can't admit it. After arguing for a while, Nanase finally agrees with him and decides to bring her father back. So they plot a plan to delay the cremation till 2 p.m. on the 25th of December, since that is enough time for Nobata to revive. Quickly, they reach the office to hold a meeting with the board of directors, and Nanase requests them to hold a funeral for her father. Watabe is against holding a funeral, but the board gives a vote in favor of Nanase. After the meeting is over, Watabe calls Mr. Tanabe and informs him about the funeral. In response, Tanabe commands him to reserve all the funeral homes in the city. Hence, Nanase and Taku are unable to find an empty funeral home in the entire city because Watabe has already reserved all of them. Suddenly, Nanase remembers that the Crown Hotel is open for reservations since the Christmas dinner show is cancelled. Without any delay, she rushes to the Crown Hotel and asks the manager to rent the hall for a funeral. But the manager apologizes by saying that they cannot hold a funeral in the hotel. Thus, Nanase lies to him that they want to hold a concert for her death metal band, Souls, to which the manager agrees and allots the hall to her. After renting the Crown Hotel for the funeral, she goes to Watabe to show him a flyer of her concert and tells him to delay this cremation till 3 p.m. Watabe has no option but to agree with her as she is the new president, but when he informs Mr. Tanabe of the delay in the cremation, he doesn't like it and tells Watabe to stop the funeral at all costs or else Nobata will revive. Thus, Watabe books all the caskets available in the city to create hurdles in the funeral. Nanase and Taku look for a casket online, but every single one of them is already bought by Mr. Tanabe and his staff members. Just when Nanase is about to lose hope, suddenly her band members arrive with a casket. Next, they need a monk, so Nanase's band member agrees to be a monk for the funeral. Finally, by the end of the day, when everything is in order, both Nanase and Taku go back to the office cafeteria and have dinner, sitting beside Nobata's body. After dinner, Taku leaves Nanase alone with her father's body and tells her that he will be right outside for the night. Meanwhile, Watabe sneaks into Nobata's Nobata's office and modifies the schedule of the funeral. The next morning, on the 25th of December, Taku notices that the schedule is sped up, so he approaches Nanase in the cafeteria and informs her that the cremation has been moved up to 1 p.m. After listening to the bad news, Nanase ponders if there is a way to revive Nobata sooner. In the meantime, Nobata's soul is standing in the corner, watching Nanase as she is stressed out. Suddenly, he remembers something, and he appears before Nanase. Since Nanase can only see him, she starts screaming screaming out of fear, but he signals her to be calm and asks her to just watch him carefully. On the other hand, Taku is confused because he can't see who Nanase is talking to. A few moments later, Nanase understands that Nobara is trying to tell her a way of bringing him back to life. As she catches the word trash can, Taku immediately remembers what Nobara's soul is referring to. Instantly, he runs toward Nobara's office and takes out the precautions paper from the trash can thrown by Wannabe. When Nanase looks at the paper, she finds the word research notebook written on it. While they are looking for the research notebook in the office, they find Nobata's phone. While going through his phone, Nanase finds out that Nobata has sent Yuriko a text every day after her death, telling her about his feelings and regrets. That's when Nanase realizes that she has misunderstood
understood him all her life and that he was not a selfish man as she thought he was. She gets sad and misses him even more as she is looking at Nobata's belongings. Taku suddenly remembers that before dying, Nobata had told Watabe to ask Yuriko about the research notebook. When he tells Nanase about this, she quickly takes him to her home and shows him the glass showpiece which plays a video of Yuriko repeatedly. Taku sees the lamp, thinks for a moment, and picks it up. To his surprise, there is a hidden button underneath. After pushing the button, a secret drawer pops out with a keyboard to put the password to open it. They try different possible passwords but can't get it right. Finally, when they put Nanase's name, the drawer opens and they finally find the research notebook where all the research about the drugs, Romeo and Juliet, is noted down. They search through the portions regarding Juliet and discover that if a high electric current is applied to the person, then it can be brought back to life sooner. They grab the research notebook and rush outside to reach the hotel, but are stopped at the gate of Nanase's house by two goons sent by Tanabe to retrieve the research notebook from them. Being an expert at karate, Nanase kicks the thugs so hard, causing them to pass out. After getting rid of the thugs, Nanase and Taku set out for the Crown Hotel to stop the cremation. Meanwhile, in the hotel, Watabe is giving instructions to his men to stop Nanase from coming inside the hall where the funeral will take place. In addition to that, Tanabe arrives at the hotel to attend the funeral and commands Watabe to make things tough for Nanase. In a short while, Taku and Nanase reach the hotel. Taku sends her in and stays behind to make a few calls to ask people to come and attend at Nanase's concert. After that, he rushes inside to join Nanase. On the other hand, Mr. Tanabe tries to close down the funeral, but the manager disapproves. So Mr. Tanabe asks Watabe to speed up the funeral and be done with it. All the staff members of Nobara come near to the casket and say their prayers. One of the members brings a spacesuit to put inside the casket, honoring Nobara's love for space. Just when Watabe announces to decorate the casket of the deceased with flowers, hundreds of people enter the hall to attend the concert they have been told about. Nanase sees her chance and sneaks into the hall, followed by Taku as well. Before Watabe can do anything, she hops on stage and stands in front of the mic, and the concert begins. But this time, she sings a very sad song about her father and how she misses him so much. Everyone in the crowd, including Nobata's soul, bursts into tears. While the crowd enjoys the concert, Taku sneaks near the casket and electrocutes Nobata's body with a high-voltage current. As soon as the current passes through the corpse, Nobata's soul enters his body. Nanase sees Taku standing beside the casket and rushes toward him. Before she can do anything, Watabe announces the funeral to be over and seals the casket to carry it away for cremation. The security guards grab Nanase to the casket is taken away. Quickly, Nanase releases herself and follows Watabe and his men, but they put the casket in the van and drive away quickly. Suddenly, Nanase sees her boss at the Chinese food center and borrows his bike from him to follow Watabe and stop him from cremating her father. Her boss gets angry and runs after her, but Taku grabs him from behind, encouraging Nanase to follow the van. However, the van is fast, and before Nanase can reach the crematorium, Watabe sends the casmet into the crematory. Nanase feels so helpless as she can't save her father. In the meantime, all the people from the concert, including Taku and other staff members of Nobata Pharmaceuticals, arrive at the crematorium. Suddenly, the door of the crematory opens, and everyone is shocked to see Nobata alive, standing in the spacesuit that was put in the casket by one of his staff members. Watabe asks Nobata how he changed clothes in the casket. In that moment, Nobata tells him that a casket is similar to a locker and that changing clothes in a locker is a special skill. Nanase is extremely happy to see her father alive and hugs him out of pure happiness. After greeting his daughter, Nobata turns toward Watabe and confronts him for all his wrongdoings. Moreover, the media reporters that arrived there earlier see Nobata come back to life and interview him about the development of the Romeo drug. That's when Nanase steps forward and introduces herself as the new president of Nobata Pharmaceuticals. She then announces in front of the media that she recently realized when her father died that rejuvenation drugs are useless. Also, she as the president declares that she will halt the development of the Romeo drug. Suddenly, Watabe pulls out the papers he got signed from Nobata.
Bada before his death. According to these papers, if they have a disagreement with the president, then the most senior member, which is Mr. Tanabe in that case, will be the one making decisions. So Mr. Tanabe declares that the merger will happen between both companies. However, his announcement is interrupted when the chemist Gramps steps forward and tells the crowd that he is the most senior member of the company because he is 80 years old. He further explains that he doesn't look old because he has been drinking the Romeo drug during trials and that has given him his young look. At last, he signals Taku to throw the research notebook about the Romeo drug in the cremator, leaving them empty-handed. After the research notebook is cremated, Nanase tells her father that she wishes to join Nobata Pharmaceuticals. Seeing his dream come true, Nobata becomes delighted and they both take a selfie together. And that's it for the recap. What are your thoughts about the movie? Will you ever try a drug like Juliet or die for two days if you ever get a chance? Let us know your comments in the section below. Also, like, share, and subscribe for more exciting movie recaps in the future.